Hello and welcome to TPM's 4-Minute Friday. Today we're going to take a uh, look at a pretty simple little routine or, or, or tip for you uh, where we want to take some uh, geometry from above and project it down on a, a view below. Uh, this is oftentimes called a projection line or even a shadow line or if it's used on roof eaves and roof edges would be a drip line. So the idea is to have some geometry above and then indicate on the floor below where the edge of that geometry is going to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and slide on over to Revit and we'll take a look at that. All right, so you can see inside of Revit we got a simple building here. So again, as I often do, uh, we've got an idea of a concept here rather than a terribly complicated building. And uh, we're looking at the first floor. If we go up to the second floor, you'll see I've got a floor system up here. And I've got the uh, edge of the floor shown here in a balcony, so we have an overlook uh, condition, you know, a mezzanine or something where we're overlooking the first floor. Uh, the idea, of course, is with the edge of the floor here, especially with this round section, we look at the first floor, uh, we typically want to see where that falls, where we would see that, so we can line up some geometry below or uh, indicate where the edge of that floor is going to be. Probably the easiest way to do that would be to turn on the second floor as an underlay. So in this view, uh, we'll simply come in here and say under the uh, underlay options, we want to look at the second floor. And there we can see the edge of our floor from above. From here, I'm going to go into the annotate command because I would like to have this line work only visible in this view. I don't necessarily want to see the edge of this uh, floor on the first floor in every view. If I do it, I, if I do want that, I could, of course, uh, do it as a model line. But uh, we're going to do it as a detail line. And I've got a uh, projected line already in place that I want to use for that for. Uh, here's one of the trips, though, tips for you, though, is that uh, if you use the pick lines, this allows you to select existing geometry that, that's there, which is what we want to do, which is what that green line there does for us. And then we also want that to be locked. In other words, it will associate the line that we draw or create will be locked to the geometry that's already there. So we can pick on that line. And you see we get the lock symbol to show it's locked. We can pick on this curve. It automatically makes a curve out of it. Again, it's locked. And then finally, we can do the same thing here as well. So what that means is that I can now turn off the underlay of the second floor above. And I'm left with the edge or the shadow line, the drip edge, the projected line of that floor from above. If I go to the second floor, and if I make a change to this, for instance, uh, we just pull this out to be a little bit larger to demonstrate that. Save it. And now we go back to the first floor. You'll see that line work updates itself. And the reason it updates is because we locked it to that existing geometry. And of course, if we deleted that line work and made new line work, that would not update because it's the line work that we locked it to is, is now gone. So there you go. You can now um, have these projected lines fall uh, on the edges of your roof, the edges of floors or soffits uh, onto the floor below. And if you create the line work with a locked mechanism, then it will update as the geometry changes as well. So hopefully this saves you a few steps and uh, we'll let you be a little more productive in Revit. So appreciate your time and uh, we'll, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.